Hi, I'm Josh Bloom. Welcome to another video in the RSP Supply Education Series. In today's video, we will move on to the next step in building an industrial control panel. If you haven't already seen the other videos in this series, we encourage you to go back and watch from the beginning so that you might better understand the entire process. The step in which we will focus on today is beginning the testing phase of the build process. Now that we have tested the power distribution and completed the point-to-point -point continuity checks, we can move on to testing the functionality of different signal types throughout the panel. Performing this step allows us to ensure the entire panel is functioning as expected before being delivered to the client. As always, the process in which we discuss today is, ju is just one method of many that can be performed to achieve the very same results. So let's get to it. So when we're testing signals, there's a few things we need to consider before we get started. Much like our other tests, we want to make sure uh, we know if our customer is going to be uh, present during our test. If that's the case, uh, just like with our power distribution portion of our test, we want to make sure that we do some preliminary testing um, on our signals to make sure that we avoid any problems or malfunctions during the factory acceptance test so that um, uh, those problems don't arise when the client's actually present so things go smoothly. So make sure we know if our client's going to be um, there before we move on to um, testing of, uh, of the signals. Uh, the next thing we want to make sure is we have the right tools in place for these signal tests. In a lot of cases, uh, specifically designed equipment should be used, but it's not always necessary. If you have access to that equipment, definitely use it. But in most cases, you can simply use a multimeter, a jumper wire for the digital inputs, um, and a few other tools as well. It's helpful to have access to the PLC, so if you can connect to it via a laptop, so that we can double check that uh, it's programmed correctly. And if we have access to the PLC, we can also perform some of the other portions of the test, like simulating some of the signals, uh, especially like digital output and analog output signals. We need access to the PLC in order to do that. From this point, uh, we simply start testing our signal. So uh, we're going to use the list that we have um, that we have created to make sure that we test every single signal. So as we go through this, we're going to sign off on each signal as it is tested. Uh, we want to make sure that as we encounter problems, um, that we note those problems, we keep a record of those issues, and we address those once the test has been complete. Um, so we want to make sure that we um, keep track of any um, problems that we may encounter along the way. Uh, with digital signals, you can, uh, in, in many cases, simply use a jumper wire connected to power and then uh, simply touch those to each signal so that you can simulate that, that on-off uh, that a digital signal uh, requires. Uh, so again, just using a jumper wire in a lot of cases is, is acceptable if you don't have any kind of special equipment. With analog signals, there's a little bit more to it. Uh, with an analog signal, at the very least, you need a multimeter. And the reason we want to do that is we want to be able to measure the milliamps. So we're typically on an analog signal, we're measuring between 420 milliamps. So having a multimeter gives us the ability uh, to kind of simulate that 4 to 20 milliamp input signal. Without a multimeter, we don't have the ability to simulate that 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So you need um, a, a multimeter, and in most cases, more like a process meter, something a little more advanced that can perform that type of 4 to 20 milliamp simulation. Again, if you don't have access to some of the specialty equipment that's designed for that type of function. So make sure we have a, a high-end multimeter or a process meter to do that. Um, also, um, because uh, we have output signals we have to measure, again, this is where we'll need access to the PLC. Um, you want to connect into that PLC and we'll want to measure digital output signals as well as analog output signals. Uh, with the analog output signal, you'll need a, a multimeter again as well. The digital output signals, typically, uh, if you're using interposing relays like we do on our panels, you can simply uh, listen for that audible click in the relay uh, to make sure that you're sending that output signal. Uh, if the HMI is available, it's a good idea to use this during your testing phase to make sure that as we're testing each of these signals that we're, uh, we're seeing that uh, signal change on our HMI screens. We want to make sure that as we're testing those, the HMI is actually representing that, um, that signal input or output. So it's a great idea to have that HMI available if possible. Um, once, the, once the testing is 
been complete, once the signal testing uh, has been complete, uh, just like the other portions of our test, we want to make sure that we have someone sign off on that uh, to make sure that uh, we know that it's been verified, there's people present during this test. If the customer is present, present, we also want to make sure that they sign off that the test has been complete and that we've notated everything uh, that was relevant during that test. And at this point, you have successfully completed the testing portion of your panel build. Performing these signal tests is critical to ensuring proper control panel functionality. Time should be taken during this process to make sure that nothing is missed and everything performs as expected. As always, we appreciate your interest and participation in this series and hope you continue to join us as we move on from this process and begin to provide other valuable content to our viewers. In our last video in this series, we will discuss the completion of the control panel and also talk about what happens with the panel as it moves on site and begins installation and commissioning. So make sure to join us next time as we finally complete our panel build series. For a full line of industrial control panel hardware and thousands of other products, please go to our website. For more information or other educational videos, go to rspsupply.com the internet's top source for industrial hardware. Also, don't forget, like and subscribe.